In this episode, I'm going to service an old Sony Walkman 10. This is the smallest full-size cassette player ever made. And without a cassette closed, it is the same size as a cassette in its carry case. It uses one AA battery. We know it needs a belt because we've looked at it before. Let's put a belt in and fix the other problems this unit has. So we start by removing all these little screws and the volume control and then basically we have to peel the back off to access the belt. And the lid lifts off. Lifts off like that. And then I should be able just to peel this back off of this thing. Like this. And we're, train we're going to change the belt if I've got one in this pack of belts here. I don't know if I've got one that's quite thin enough for this. Because this was a pretty thin belt this thing used. But I'm going to go through and see which ones I've got. Whether I've got one that's going to be in the right size to fix this thing. And that one might be more like it. A little thinner belt. Yeah, this one might work. Try this one. Haha, ha, look, that looks like it fits. Let's uh, put a battery in this thing and see whether this little Walkman will play. Because that is miniaturization for a tape player. Smallest tape player in the world is this one, right? This is the one without the radio. And it's the size of a cassette in its case. The Walkman itself is the size of a cassette when there's no tape in it. So I'll we'll load a single AA battery. That's the beauty of these units, right? They had a DC to DC converter in them. They would step up the one and a half volts to about, I think it was three or five volts that they used to run the system. Now you have to plug, it won't turn on if you don't plug anything in. It has a power saving feature, you see, until you plug in your headphones, it won't turn anything on. And it still won't turn anything on. Why? Is my battery not making a connection? Or is my battery dead? Maybe the battery is no good. 
wouldn't be the first time I've picked up a battery and it was dead. One point six, the battery is okay. Why is it not turning on? I think it just must be the battery connection because it did come on there. Either that or it's my little switch right here. I bet, yeah, I bet it's the switch. And I'll inspect these switches a little closer. I think I'll put a little deoxit onto the, the switch contacts here. Help clean the switch contacts a bit. Because I believe that's where the fault might be. Okay, let's try the battery in here now. So I know it's the switch contacts because if I touch these two together, here it'll start, it'll go. So it's just these contacts here are not making a good connection. Fast forward working. can always remove this little circuit board here that has the switch on it. These are the switches here. Okay, I just cleaned up those switch contacts a bit. We'll try it again and see whether we're making any progress. We're making some progress. Let's uh, place a tape in this thing. Side A goes in like that. Let's see if we get some music out of this little player. Thumbs up, man. There you go. You get the, <laughs> the smallest cassette player ever made by any company. The Walkman 10. And it works. Mm. Oh, battery came loose. Um, uses one AA battery. Look on the bottom of this thing here. My battery is not making a good connection because it's not it's not held in place here. But this thing has a DC to DC converter. 
steps the 1.5 volts up to 3 volts. This is a three phase flat motor. It's a BSL motor, there's no brushes. And um, this is the servo for it here. So this is the motor speed control over here, which you can adjust from the outside of the unit through this little hole, this little access hole here. Um, it's servo, it's got a frequency generator on it and a pulse generator. It's got a couple of, uh, it's got a couple of uh, FG field detectors, uh, Hall effect devices. So as the motor spins, it detects where the motor is, provides that feedback to the IC, which generates the three phase rotating signal to spin the motor. And uh, to say this is the smallest Walkman that Sony ever made. And I doubt that there's too many of these things still around because they were so small and so fragile that well, people tended to break them. They'd sit on them. They'd have them in their pocket and forget it was there and sit on them and bend them. But uh, now mine works. Now I've got the F10 as well, which needs a belt, but it, the belt that was in it melted and it's all gooey. But if I've got another belt, I might put that one in that one. And I've got the, the I think it's the F100, which was the auto reverse one as well. But I started out by getting this one working. And... Uh, now I just gotta put it back together. So let's uh, let's do that. Yeah, this was just a work of art. Look at the tiny little capstan shaft in here, and the even smaller little pinch roller, and of course the playback head. These were quite the work of art. And oh yes, they have an auto stop too. When it gets to the end, it will actually stop. It has an auto shut off. Let's get the back back on this thing here. And that's a challenge in itself to get the back on because you have to actually set these little caps, these little, maybe I set these in like this. Yeah, that's what I do. I gotta set these into the, I gotta set these into the slots first is what I have to do. Set them into the slots and then drop this together. Like that. There we go. That's got that together. Now let's put the screws back in this thing. And then the cover goes on like this. You have to kind of put this into the sides here. And then slip it down. And then the two screws that hold the cover back together. There it is. Where you want. Of course my switch isn't gonna work now for rewind. Oh gotta work this thing, it'll probably kick in. on metal, chrome, or normal.
these were always quite noisy, these machines, because of the little motor that's in there. There we go. Now I rewind working. We just had to work that switch a bit. The contacts are kind of um, a bit uh, oxidated because it hasn't been used in so long. So working the switches back and forth will fix the contact problem. Rewind. Just got to clean this thing up a bit. Maybe we'll do that. Make this thing shine like new. After all, a Walkman of this vintage has to look new, right? Has to look in good shape. Actually, considering the age of this thing, it's actually in very good shape. Get my cleaning cloth here. Now you see, if, if there's no tape, you don't plug uh, headphones or something into here, it won't start. That's so that if the button gets pressed in your pocket, you're not going to run your batteries out. How ingenious is that, huh? There's a switch. The idea behind that was when you take the tape out, when you close this down, of course, it covers the headphone jack, so there can't be any headphones in. So if you're carrying this thing in your pocket and a button gets accidentally pressed, it's not going to run the battery down. Cool, huh? I'll show you how the auto stop on this thing works. It just, it just shuts the motor off once it gets to the end, if I remember correctly. So if I hit rewind, when it gets to the end of it, it'll just shut the motor off. And there it goes, and shut off. Power light's gone out, see? Power light's on. And power light went out. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is a little dim red light there. It's hard to see with the lights in here, but... Sa same thing happens on, uh, on play. When it gets to the other, when it gets to the end, it just stops automatically. So if I put the tape in, and hit play. The tape hits the end. See? Actually even releases the mechanism. Auto stop on play on fast forward and rewind. When it stalls out the motor, it detects that the motor is stopped and it shuts the power down. Pretty neat, huh? This was one of my favorite Walkmans, and no, it's not for sale. This is part of my collection. I've got a few of them. I'm not selling them, so don't ask. Thanks for watching.